Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the first in a series of videos that will dive deep into the CSS language. If you follow along with this series, you'll have a full and rich understanding of CSS and you'll be able to apply it freely to your projects. So in essence, this is the first video in a beginner to mastery CSS course. The only knowledge that is assumed here is a rudimentary understanding of HTML. So if you've seen the previous video series that we did on HTML, then you're more than covered. If not, the link to that entire playlist is a on screen now and this will get you up to speed with anything that you don't quite understand just yet. The same link is also below in the description. In this particular video we're going to define what CSS is exactly and we'll look at how we use it in web development projects. We'll have a brief look at where it came from and we'll take a look at some websites with and without CSS applied to them. And finally when we were in the HTML section of videos, we defined a general rule of HTML, that HTML elements are comprised generally, but not exclusively, of opening and closing tags surrounding some content that will be marked up. And we'll do exactly the same here in this video for CSS. So we'll define a general rule of CSS syntax. So, looking back at the projects we made at the end of the HTML section, I think you'll agree that the burger-based site looks a lot better with CSS included. If we compare the styled and unstyled versions of the site, we can see that there is a stark difference between them. We want to be building stylish, responsive websites for our users, rather than this plain, text-based, unstyled markup that HTML gives us. We can do that by using HTML and CSS together in conjunction with one another. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and I'll explain what this means in a short while. CSS is a language that is used for the presentation and styling of content on the web. It is used by all browsers and all devices everywhere. For many years after Tim Berners-Lee first created the World Wide Web in 1989, there was no such thing as CSS. The original plan for sharing information on the web offered no way at all to style a website. There's a now infamous post buried in the archives of the World Wide Web mailing list, which you can find at the link below in the description. It was written by Mark Andreessen in 1994, who would go on to create early browsers like Mosaic and Netscape. In the post, Andreessen remarked that because there was no way to style a web page with HTML, the only thing that he could tell web developers when asked about visual design was, sorry, you're screwed. Early developers were quick to realize that this kind of approach wasn't ideal and wouldn't last long, particularly when powerful commercial interests started to look at the web in the way that we understand the web now as a means of getting large numbers of people's eyeballs on products and services. The idea that grabbed everybody's attention was first proposed by a Hacken VM Lee in October of 1994, and as we know, it was called Cascading Style Sheets, or just CSS. Hacken VM Lee first proposed CSS while working with Tim Berners-Lee at CERN in Switzerland. Other style sheet languages for the web were proposed around the same time and discussions inside the World Wide Web Consortium resulted in the first W3C CSS recommendation being released in 1996. In particular, Bert Boss's proposal was influential. He became the co-author of CSS1 and is regarded as the co-creator of CSS. CSS is going to be 25 years old this year and it is still going strong and every single website made now uses CSS. So CSS describes how HTML elements are displayed on the screen. How I like to think about it is that if HTML is the structure or skeleton of a web page, then CSS is the skin or the clothing. We use CSS to describe how things look. So for example, you can specify that you want the background of an element to be orange rather than the default of white, or all of the paragraphs should be blue and in a Helvetica typeface, or that all H1 headings should only be 90% of the default size, or we can make an image 35% of its original width and give it a 10 pixel border, so on and so forth. A great website that every CSS developer knows, and I'm sure many of you have heard of it too, is cssengarden.com.
This is a slightly older site and I believe it's been around since 2003 or something like that and it hasn't been updated since 2013 but it still perfectly demonstrates the power of CSS. Some of you have most likely seen this mentioned in courses like uh, Colt Stills and Brad Travis's and I've seen it used at Lambda School and it is mentioned in CSS the definitive guide by Eric Meyer and Estelle Vale as well. And that's because though it's old, it's still a great resource, so we'll check it out here. So CSS Zen Garden is, in essence, an example website which demonstrates well what can be done and accomplished with CSS. It is a site where the HTML remains unchanged and only the styles applied with CSS are changed. So if we look at a robot named Jimmy, Garments and Apothecary, you will see how radically different each of these sites are, despite having exactly the same HTML markup. Everything from the layout, to the color scheme, to the typefaces, backgrounds, etc, etc, are all varied. It's the same HTML, but different CSS. As the site says, it's a great demonstration of what can be accomplished through CSS-based design, which is why I thought it was important to show you. If we go back to the home page, you can actually download and view the HTML file and you'll see it looks pretty similar to the kind of things that we were making uh, and building in the HTML section of videos. A basic standard web page with H1s and H2s, paragraphs, links and a few unordered lists with links as uh, the list items. So it's encouraging that we can start with this, which we are all well capable of replicating now, and end up with something like one of the three designs that we saw on CSS Zen Garden, once we, of course, learn to add the CSS. We can also see something similar at W3Schools. So if we go to w3schools.com, the link to this is below in the description, by the way, if you want to go there as well, we can see a basic homepage with some style sheets applied to it. First, let's select no style sheet, and I know that you recognize this look. It's very similar formatting to what we've seen in the HTML section of the course. We have a couple of H1 headers, an H2 and an H3. We have an unordered list with five list items and some text separated with paragraph tags and divisions. Now, let's select some of the four different style sheet options and you'll see just how a basic page that's way more basic than the page you built in your HTML project, if you followed along, can be styled with some basic CSS. The options are endless and make an enormous amount of difference to the um, appearance of the page, despite the fact that the HTML is totally unchanged. Once you've learned the general rule of CSS, then we find that learning CSS is mostly all about learning the different properties available for use. Some of which you will use very frequently like font family, color, padding and margin and others more sparingly and you will learn this as you go along. Um, we'll highlight a great deal of these properties that we use commonly throughout uh, this CSS section. So CSS works by associating rules with HTML elements and it is these CSS rules that govern how elements are displayed. Any CSS begins with a rule set and it is made up of two parts. A selector, which is the code that selects the HTML elements that you want to style and a declaration block, which defines the style that you want to apply to said HTML. These go inside curly braces. So here, our selector is the HTML body element, the bit that comes after the head section. As the selector indicates which element the rule will be applied to, here we'll be applying whatever CSS we have in our declaration block to the body element. The declaration is made up of two parts, a CSS property and then the value of that property, and these are separated by a colon. There are hundreds of properties that you can use to control everything from color, positioning, borders, width, height, and even animations. And you can see them all here at this link at CSS Tricks, and this is called the CSS Almanac. This is really useful and a resource that I recommend. If you find yourself looking for answers on anything to do with CSS, and you go to Google to search, a lot of what will actually come up in the search results is going to be from this site. You see exactly how many CSS properties are available, and as I said, they handle all kinds of different things. You use a handful regularly, so you definitely don't need to memorize these, so don't worry about trying to remember all of these CSS properties. 
the ones that you use all the time will become apparent fairly quickly and you'll gain an insight to which ones these are as we progress through these videos. The particular CSS property that we have here is assigning a font family and this is being applied to the body element. The value indicates the setting for the chosen property and here we have selected the value of Helvetica in this case. So this rule is telling us that everything in the body element should be shown in a Helvetica typeface. You could also have properties like margin, border, color, etc., etc. anything that we saw in the CSS Almanac. So if we go back to the CSS Almanac, let's have a quick look up and down the list and we see there are a great deal of properties that we can apply to our elements. So if for example, I wanted to know what background color does, I could click on that and we have this dedicated page on the background color property. We have some information and some examples of code snippets. So it says here the background color property in CSS applies solid colors as backgrounds on an element. And here is an example. So if we wanted to take that example and head over to CodePen, we can just paste that into the CSS panel of the editor. We see that it gives our background this horrible green color. This is something that we can use to great effect a little further on down the line, but maybe not with this particular color. Of course, we can change this color and some colors are actually built into CSS and we can just name them rather than using this string of letters and numbers, which is a hexadecimal code. We will learn all about color in an upcoming video, so don't worry too much about this code for now, but we could just have yellow or red, we could have blue or spring green, which is a green color that I like. So we could look at any of the properties and they would have articles like this of similar detail. So it's a great reference and also a good resource for learning. It's also a cool place to grab little code snippets that we can modify and play around with. Again, you do not need to memorize all of the CSS properties. It would be unrealistic to do so. It's not a good use of your available brain matter. Okay, so I think this is a good place for us to stop. In summary, we've looked at what CSS is and how it is used in web development. We've also looked at CSS Zen Garden and the variation that CSS can bring to one simple HTML structure. Before that, we looked at the burger-based project from the HTML series of videos with and without CSS applied, and we saw the huge contribution that CSS makes to sites on the web. Finally, we defined a general rule of CSS syntax in that we have a selector which selects the HTML element or class or ID that you want to style and a declaration block which defines the particular styles that you want to apply. The styles come in the shape of a property and its value and there are many of these that do all manner of things. We can use uh, resources like the CSS Almanac at CSS Tricks to see what is available to us as developers. We don't need to memorize all of the CSS properties and regularly we'll find that we use just a few. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your time. If you like the content on the channel, then remember to like and subscribe and check in with us on social media. We're on all of the major platforms and the links to everything is below in the description. Other than that, I'll see you in the comments section below and in the next video. The next video is going to cover how we actually include CSS in our projects. We know what CSS is and the form the syntax takes. So next we'll look at how we marry together HTML and CSS and have these two Two technologies working in conjunction together. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.